sugar. So um, that, if you think about there up on food levels, the amount of sugar is this in grams. And so you'll see 20 grams of sugar sometimes in something that's not a big deal. So that's how many teaspoons? That would be 80 teaspoons. Next question. I know, it's pretty, pretty interesting, isn't it? Which of these is in an artificial sweetener? Aspartame, sucralose, stevia, or neotame? What, what would you think it is? It is stevia. It isn't an artificial sweetener. All of these are artificial sweeteners, except for stevia. You're right. Stevia is definitely a great product. It's, it comes from a natural uh, sugar leaf, stevia leaf. Mm -hmm. And it is one, like I said earlier, keep it natural, keep it raw. That is definitely something that I is raw. I think you find one that tastes good. I think, you know, I, I yeah, I like the stevia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't, you don't no, I, I think don't they're more like it. It tastes different? Taste. Does it taste um, artificial? No. Well, the one, I ha I've had several, and one of them was very, very bad. Was it? Uh -huh. And I the one that I had that was tasty, I had not been able to find. So oh. I was just wondering. Well, another thing is um, agave nectar. It's not on here, but I mean, that's another oh, natural yeah. sweetener. Yes. Agave nectar, and it comes liquid, and, and it's definitely sweet. It, a little goes a long way on that. Next question, let's see what we can... When grocery shopping, probably the best way to avoid sugars with foods with added sugars, I thought this was interesting, is to shop the store's perimeter. It says the outside walls of the supermarket tend to be where staples are stocked, and shoppers have to move through the entire store to get to their necessities, like the produce, milk, eggs, and bread. Uh, and that, which happens to be the basis of a healthy diet that's low in added sugar. So I thought that was interesting once I read that. You go into the supermarket and you see that the good stuff is all on the outsides. Mm -hmm. So that's something, a good tip to know. You're born with a sweet tooth. True or false? False. false. True. True. Mm -hmm. So we are hardwired to prefer sweet from birth. That's pretty, pretty alarming. That, that, for me, it explained everything. I was like, okay, well, I won't feel so bad because I was born with a sweet tooth. <laughs> so that's neat. Good information to know, some little tidbits of knowledge. Um, now, I don't know if you know this, but the FDA, Food and Drug Administration, has now changed that there's no more food pyramid. We actually go by, it's, uh, it's called My Plate. And My Plate is a guide for the day. It's not for every meal. And you'll see that it really just gives you a better visual representation of you know, how you're supposed to eat and when you look at your day's meals. It kind of gets back to my... Uh, title of the presentation, what did my kid eat today? It's ketchup, a vegetable, um, which, you know, I thought that was something to think about because I know, I mean, have any of y'all ever thought of that during the day? Oh, does ketchup count? Because you think, did my kid have any vegetables? So um, definitely now we know vegetables uh, don't need to have all the sugar that ketchup has. So, um, but this is an each day, it's not a per meal, and then you'll see that have your plate is fruits and vegetables, and then it goes through and talks about the different, um, what the difference between now the my plate and the food pyramid is they've taken out the oils as one of your parts right. of your meals because now oils are included in so much of your food it's not necessary to be a portion of your of your plate so now eating right and what to know there here's some good stuff to just go by as far as you know how to inter exchange things in your diet and what you cook for your kids um, says typical Americans eat 59% of the amount of vegetables recommended, and you should focus more on dark green, red, orange vegetables, and beans and peas. But then the next thing is remember, green peas are considered a starch. So they are just like a white potato. So when you're looking at your plate, and you're looking to see, you know, do I have a steak, do I have a salad, and, you know, you, you don't want a potato and a... And a, or a piece of bread and the green starchy peas because those are both going to be your carbs, your, your starchies. Next information, beans and peas that are protein foods include kidney beans, pinto beans, black beans, all of your different beans. And we should eat more of these sources of protein because there's less fat in them as opposed to some of our meats that we eat. Um, Americans get an average of 3.5 ounces of seafood a week. Recommended that we more than double that to eight ounces a week. I thought that was very interesting that they're asking us to double our intake. Um, 
which you know some of us feel like we did good because we ate it once that week. So um, we definitely should substitute one serving of seafood per for one serving of meat or poultry each week. A solid fat is any type of fat that is solid at room temperature. This includes milk fat, lard, stick margarine, and shortening. Solid fats make up an average of 19% of the total calories. They contribute fewer nutrients and they have no fiber. So these are just all some really good background of, of, of how to eat and, and what to look for when you're looking at. My next topic is a plan for your picky eaters. I know that that is definitely an issue with some families. Uh, do y'all have any picky eaters I'm in your family? Picky eater. Yeah. But I tend not to take them with me to the grocery store, not to the farmer's market yet, because it doesn't. It has more temptation for vegetables right. and fruits, but the grocery store has temptation for candy and for Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's what they're saying. Some of the tips that, that I've come up with is, uh, you know, let your child explore and. Maybe have them go through some cookbooks or some cookie magazines to pick out some, some good ingredients and make it fun. And if they do go to the grocery store with you, have them maybe play a game with picking out different colors. And you know, you have to have each color in the grocery cart for our meal that we're going to have maybe for the week. Make it a little easier at first. And then, you know, you, after you educate a little bit more and you all really talk about it and ch change your mindset of what really is healthy, then it might be a little bit more fun for them. I know it's never fun to just completely stop eating all the good, yummy, starchy stuff. I know it's, it's not easy for my kids either, so. Um, and let your child choose. Once your child's explored all the produce, you give them, you know, a choice. What, do you, what, what looks good to you? What do you want to make? And then maybe that's when you come home and from something that you picked that looks really cool. I mean, like those acorn squashes and the different squashes from the grocery stores, those might look fun and interesting to the kids. Or those... What are those things with all those stalks and the, the turnips, the actual turnips? You know, that looks fun. So that might be fun. And then, then you can go home with your kids and find it and find a recipe that involves that, that part of the produce that they picked out and thought was so neat. And, and helping them understand how to cook it and let your child cook and get them involved in that. And another thing is to um, ask them to be a taster. You can make one of the kids be the official taster for the night, and then that gives them the job. And, Maybe make them a cute little crown, or you know, they're the official taster for the night. It, it depends on the age of your children, but definitely try to make it more fun. And that will bring us to our summary of just what we went over today. Um, I, I would hope to think that we all know the importance of limiting our sugar, um, limiting our trans fats, and the, the, all the solid fats that are in our foods, and lowering the portions that we intake every day. Make it fun for the whole family. That's definitely something that you want to make it fun, change the mindset, and, and, and explain to them the importance of their health. Maybe show them some of those awful-looking pictures that we saw of that person with diabetes in their feet. And show them that that could be possibly something that happens to them if they continue to eat the sugar that they do. So a little bit of a scare tactic, but <laughs> maybe it might work a little bit. Yeah. And last, I will tell you that I've made a, a, cute, a nice little sheet for you guys. 10 tips for fast cooking. So if you want to take these on your way out, it's front and back. And it's some different tips on fast cooking and how to make it quick and easy and healthy when we're all on the go working. So I hope you all enjoyed it today. I hope everybody in, found something interesting and the learned something. Tips at me because I drink a lot of soda. I know. It's, it's very alarming. Mm -hmm. If anything, that's what you learned is maybe I should cut back on some yeah. of the sodas. Yeah, I believe that. Three yeah. of those. So it's scary. And then your sugary sugar, coffee drink. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, thank One you for coming. Mm -hmm. Stop.